Rebecca needs to get up, get up, get up in Jesus' name. Get up out of that situation. Get up out of that thing that's holding you down. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I already feel the Spirit of God in this place this morning. We welcome those that are picking us up live streaming this morning, and we just uh, thank you. We appreciate all of you. This is Reverend Judith Luke. I'm coming from the Elgin Congregational Holiness Church at 1331 Smyrna Road here in Elgin, South Carolina. Praise God. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 44. And if you're out there, and I've never said this yet, and I don't like saying it, but uh, we appreciate any help. If some of you might want to throw something our way, we'd appreciate it. Don't give us nothing that belongs to your church. Amen. You support your own church. You support uh, wherever you're at. But if you've got a little extra, we know how to use it here at Elgin. We just use it for the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And I uh, just appreciate all of you. But you know what? I ain't never known nobody go up to Hardee's or Burger King and order something and eat there and then they pay down somewhere else at another restaurant. Have you ever seen that? So don't give us anything that would belong to your home church. You Amen. support your pastor, praise God. Amen. But I do appreciate being here this morning. And uh, before we actually get into uh, the, another song and we get into the message this morning, I want to brag on my people. Now, some of you don't have a church out there, and we invite you to visit here with us at Elgin. And uh, I just got some of the best people in the world. I'm just telling you. Now, some of you other pastors may say you got them, but that, that's okay. But I got some of the best that there is. We have had people that have taken care of each other. They call, they check on each other through this virus thing that's been going on. I've had people, oh, there's not a day go by, if somebody doesn't call to check on me, somebody doesn't say, Sister Luke, do you need anything? They'll say, I'm down here at the store, can I bring you anything? Or, you know, uh, is there anything? And they'll show up at my door with food, and I've had them to come and cut the grass, and they've even brought me dessert. Do I look like I need dessert? But they brought me dessert and all kinds of stuff, and, and I am just so grateful to the people that we have here at the Elton C.H. Church. So I invite you folks to come and be with us here in our service. It's soon going to be hopefully going all the way. We're distancing for those that are here this morning. A lot of our folks not back yet, but we are distancing. We're taking care of each other, and we're just looking for greater things to take place here at Elgin. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. Now, we're going to ask Judy if she would. I thank God for our singers and our musicians. And again, let me brag on them. I got time this morning to do it. We got some of the greatest singers and musicians. You say, well, they're not professionals. <laughs> oh, no, they may not be. But they got the Spirit of God. Yeah. You see, that's what I look for is the Spirit of God. And they know how to do that. And, and so we're just so grateful. So all of us are not back yet, but we thank God for those that are here and those that have been helping us. All right, Sister Judy, I'm going to turn it over to you.
go up. Thank you, singers, and thank you, musicians, this morning. And uh, we're going to get into the Word of God this morning. God is a great and a mighty God. And what I'm going to be ministering to you this morning is going to seem maybe a little bit odd because the truth of the matter, I have preached uh, parts of this sermon. I have preached them at funerals. You say, well, she's preaching a funeral song. No, I'm not. Uh, I, I want to preach this morning, and I'm going to talk about when I wake up to sleep no more. That's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about some new things that we're going to have over on the other side of eternity. I want to talk about heaven this morning. Amen. Do you hear me? I want to talk to you that have lost loved ones, that have died in the Lord, and perhaps you're grieving. You're grieving your heart out. Come on. Listen, you don't have to grieve. They're over on the other side. They're waiting on you. Amen. Glory be to God. They've already over there. They've seen the face of Jesus this yeah. morning. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. And uh, uh, let me go ahead and pray. Father, I do thank you this morning for what we feel in our heart, in our life, and in our soul this morning. God, there's hurting people in this world. There's people who are who are just grieving because they have lost loved ones. They have lost everything they've had. People have lost homes. They've just lost everything. They have no hope outside of you. And I pray that the word of God this morning would just bring hope to hurting people. Amen. That it would touch lives this morning and cause people to realize that on the other side of eternity, everything's going to be all right. And they just need to prepare to get there. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen and amen. I want to read out of 1 Corinthians this morning. I'm going to read, begin at verse 35. And it said, But some men will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Verse 44. <clears throat> It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And then verse 51 and 52, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, and the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, I'm going to go ahead and read verse 33, shall put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Thank God for the reading of the word of God this morning. Do you know that this is called the great resurrection chapter? That's what it's called. Paul, the Apostle Paul, is writing concerning sleeping Christians. But now you listen. He's talking about the resurrection from the dead. But I am not talking this morning about something that people call soul sleep. There is no such thing as soul sleep this morning. You see, for the child of God, the Apostle Paul said in, in chapter 2 Corinthians chapter 5, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You see, Amen. when you die, your spirit and your soul goes either to heaven or it goes to hell to await the resurrection of the body. And the choice is yours to make on this side of eternity as to where you go. Did you know that there's going to be a getting up morning? Yeah. I'm glad that the Bible calls it the resurrection. Now some of you can say amen if you want to amen. out there. And I believe that there's two main resurrections. There is one for the just and there's one for the unjust. That means there's one for the saved and there's one for the unsaved. Hallelujah. And every one of you, you're going to be part of one or of these two resurrections. I thank God I've got my reservation this morning in the first resurrection. Revelation 20 about verse 6. Says, blessed and holy is he that has his his has a, his part in the first resurrection. Yes, amen. 
You know when the first resurrection takes place? It's at the time that we call the rapture of the church. Yes. That's what I'm waiting on this morning, yes. children yes. of God. Hallelujah. Any moment he can come, yes. he can take us home. Yes. Glory yes. to God. Yes. But now the second resurrection, you don't want to be in it. If you can get out of the call, you can get out of it through the blood. It takes a place uh, after the thousand year millennial reign, and it's called the great white throne judgment. You don't want to be part of that. Right. But there's some things I want to talk to you about this morning. You that are out there listening by the airways, I want to talk to you about the grave before I get into this message this morning. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 and 19, he said, if the grave is all the hope that you have, you are of all men most miserable. Right. Listen, if that old tombstone that they put on that grave, my God, if, if that old piece of clay that is this body right here is all the hope that we have, then we are of all men most miserable. I would hate to think of all the troubles and the heartaches and the worries and the trials that we go through in this life and death comes that there's no hope beyond the grave. I thank God this morning that there is hope. Yeah. I've laid some precious loved ones away. They have passed away. They're in the grave right now. Their old bodies are. But not their soul and their spirit. Amen. But I'm glad that as I stood by an open grave of my loved ones that, that knew the Lord and I knew that they had accepted the blood of Jesus, I could look down to Travis and that old grave. I could look at that casket laying there that they was getting ready to put in that grave. And I could talk to them and I could say, bless God, I'll meet you in the morning by the bright river side. I tell you this morning, there is another meeting place on the other side of the church. It is a place called heaven this morning. Woo, John chapter 14 verses 1 through 3. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. That's simple enough. He said, in my Father's house, uh, there are many mansions. Yeah. If it were not so, I would have told you. Right. Yeah. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Yeah. And if I go and prepare a place for you, he said, I am coming again uh, to receive you yeah. unto myself. Where? 
have this morning. That when I talk about the grave, that grave, ha that grave has no hope, no strength. Right. That grave has no victory because Jesus has already conquered yeah. death and hell in the grave. Yes. And when they lay my body out there, don't you come and stand on my grave or sit on my grave. You might as well get out of the way because at any moment, that, oh, Lord, be to God, that grave can burst open and I'm coming out of there. Yeah. Well, hallelujah. You know what? I would like to think that when my old body is raised up and I get a new body, that maybe during a thousand year millennial reign, now I'm not saying this is true, I said I'd like to think about this. I'd like to go back to that old cemetery and I'd like to stand with the Bible in my hand, hallelujah, and I want to look down at that old hole in the ground. As a matter of fact, they can put a, a Bible in my casket. I want them to open it, Travis, to that scripture in the book of Job. And when them old skin worms come to get my body, one of them will come this way, one of them will come that way. But before they can get to me, they got to go over that Bible and that scripture where Job said, though the skin worms devour my body, yet in my flesh will I see God. Worship 
the Father in the temple. Amen. Woo! That's the rapture of the church. Yes. some of you. I know I did out there, but that's okay. Go and study it out for yourself. But let's get back to heaven. Let's get back to see what happens at the resurrection. You see, the Bible said that John the Revelator was on the Isle of Patmos on the Lord's Day. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like every day is the Lord's Day. And, and when you in the spirit, you will see things of the spirit. And you get a vision of the spiritual world. And while he was in the spirit, he saw some things. You know why some of you never see nothing spiritual? You never get in the spirit. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah, anyone. I felt that hit home, and I can't even see some of y'all. <laughs> And he said, I, John, saw the first heaven and the first earth pass away. This is Revelation 21. And he said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. He saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. And then again, in Peter said, in 2 Peter 3 and 13, we, according to the promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Do you know it's called heaven? Do you know that's what the saints of God are looking for this morning? We're looking for the place called heaven. But do you know not everybody's going to be there? No, 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 no. It's going to take you something to get there. Revelation 21, verse 7 and 8 says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. And then it goes on to tell us some of the people that won't be there. And it said, But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone. Yes. That's what the word of God says. But the desire of the saints of God is to get to this place called heaven. Amen. One day, there was a man by the name of Abraham. I had me a tissue. Travis, would you bring me one, please? There was a man by the name of Abraham. Thank you, Brother Mike. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. And, and he started out on a journey. And he, he started out on a journey. And if you were to ask Abraham, and you were to say, Abraham, where in the world are you going? Where do you think you're going? You had everything you needed there. Why in the world would you be taking the journey you've taken? And you know what he would say unto you? He'd say, I'm just looking for a city which had foundations whose builder and maker is God. Yeah. He looked for the same city that me and you are looking for. Yeah. And the Bible said in Hebrews 13 and 14, but here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come, a place, children, where he's going to wipe away all tears from your eyes. Let me tell you this morning, there'll be no tears that will stain the streets of that city. There are times, let me just speak to some of you from my heart here. There are times that some of you weep and you are crying in the night seasons for those that have gone and passed on and, and you're in depression and, and you're heartbroken and I can understand that. There are times that you feel like your soul is just going to crush and your eyes have become as it were gushing rivers of tears. And your soul cries and you weep inside. But one day God is going to take a gauze of love and he's going to wipe away all of those tears from your eyes. Glory to God. Listen, those of you who have spent sleepless nights and you have wept over your 
prayers. What a of love and wipe every tear from your eyes. But what, Sister Luke, is going to happen to those who die in the Lord? And I want to talk to you briefly about the fact that there's going to wake up to seven new things. Now, there's more. There's a lot of new things over there. But I just want to talk about seven of them this morning. First of all, do you know, you that are listening, that you're going to wake up to a new body? Ooh, yeah. Paul said, we sown in corruption, we're raised in incorruption. We're sown in dishonor, we're raised in honor. We're sown in weakness, we're raised in power. We're sown in a natural body, he said, but there's a body called a spiritual body we're going to raise up in. I'm going to have a new body when that trumpet sounds, praise God. Now, I don't know exactly what it looks like, but it ought to look just about like me. You know, but it's going to be better than me. It's going to be about 50 pounds lighter. Well, hallelujah. And, and it's going to look the best that I could ever look. And I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to ask God to do me a favor. And I'm going to tell him to make me about three inches taller. That'll help me a whole lot. Uh, some of you might laugh about that. Praise God. I don't know. But I know it's going to be a body, Travis. Yes, amen. It's going to be one like Jesus had when he was resurrected. Jesus in Luke 24, the disciples were in the upper room and Thomas was there. And Thomas didn't believe it was him. And Jesus came in. He said, come on over here, Thomas. I'll just paraphrase it. He said, does a spirit have flesh and bone? He said, hand on me, touch me. Put your hand in my side. Look at the nail prints in my hands. Hallelujah. He said, feel me. I've been resurrected from the dead. I got flesh and he said, I got bone. So that body tells me we're going to have a body sucked out of flesh and bone. But do you know what the life source of that body is going to be? It's going to be the spirit of the almighty God. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Glory. And that second thing about that body, it's going to be a body but it's also, it's not going to be constrained by man. What were you talking about, Sister Luke? Did you know that when I get a new body, Jesus did it? And it was after his resurrection. Do you know if I want to go through that door back at the back of that church, I don't even have to turn the knob, door knob to open it. <laughs> I could walk right through it if I want to. Now, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm going to see. Who knows? I, I believe you're going to be able to think it and you can get it. I believe if I want to go to Mars and God says, okay, if you go to Mars, I just think I'm on Mars. He'll send me up to Mars and look around. Now, I know I'm being a little bit facetious. I don't know, but I do know it's going to be a new body. It's going to be better than the one we got. Not only is it not constrained by matter, I can go through the walls and the doors if I want to walk through them. But do you know what? It's going to be an immortal body. There will be no corruption. It will never get tired. It will never get sick. You won't have to wear any of these eyeglasses. You won't have to have a peg leg. You know, we won't have any cancer. It won't grow old. This body gets weak, but not that body. Right. Woo! Hallelujah. Honey, when we arise and we wake up to sleep no more, that body's going to be better than the one I got. That's all Amen. I know about it. Thank you, Lord. He said in Revelation 21 and 4, he said, neither shall there be any more death. Do you know why there'll be no more death outside of the fact that Jesus Christ done conquered? He said, but the last enemy he put down is death. You know why? Because sin can't enter into that place called heaven. Amen. And sin is the cause of death. But it's going to be barred from the city and from the mansions of glory where everybody there will be holy. Woo! Where do you get it from? From the word of God. Do you know there'll be no wickedness over there? Hallelujah. Zechariah 14 
says even the bells of the horses will have holiness under the Lord written upon them. He said the pots and the pans will have holiness under the Lord. Do you know that Isaiah 35 and 8 said it's going to be a highway? It's called a highway of holiness. Do y'all hear me, children, this morning? Yes, amen. Therefore, there be no funeral establishments. There be no orphan homes. There be no need of the jails. Death will be gone. Sin will be absent. It'll be out of commission. My Lord, some of y'all be standing up Yeah. He said... There'll be no more sorrow and there'll be no crying. Amen. Let me make a statement to you this morning that are listening. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Glory. Let me say that again. Glory. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Mm -hmm. My Thank Lord God. 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 When your foot steps over the golden threshold and the pearly white gates swing open on their golden hinges, then he will heal every sorrow that humanity ever had. He will nullify it with the ointment that comes from the root and the offspring of Jesse from the plant of renown. Hallelujah. He will heal Praise God this morning. Do you know that just one deep breath of that glorious atmosphere of heaven and, 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 and it will be like a deep breath of the eternal springs? Do you know that? In that one breath will be the fragrance of every flower that God could have in his garden. I am going to a land, and if you are saved, you're going there too. Wherever home is a mansion, and the caretakers of that city, Travis, are the angels of God, and the citizens will be the saints, and the city directory will be the book of life. And if you can find your name there, it belongs to you. to a place where every step that I take is going to be a thrill. Every day is going to be a rapture. Every hour is going to be a jubilee. And every moment is going to be a triumph. And every meal is going to be a banquet. I'm talking about the glorious place yes, called heaven. Give me my hand. Y'all having a good time listening to me. But I feel this thing this morning. Yes. You're going to have a new body. Yes. And I've got to get going on this thing, though. No. Secondly, you're going to have a new service. See, I've served the Lord down here for many a year. But do you know I've just been getting in practice when I'm going to serve Him over yonder? Yes. Some folk and you that are listening to me by way of the airways, you can't even serve Him on a Sunday morning. Or Sunday night. We can't even get you out to a Wednesday, a, a midweek service, and God forbid we have a revival. I don't know how some of you is ever going to serve him over there. But God says if you say, he said in Revelation 7, we're going to stand before his throne and said, we're going to serve him. Amen. Do you hear me? Now, heaven is a real place. Some of you got the idea you're going to float around on a cloud. You're going to pluck a harp, uh, you know, throughout all eternity. No, sorry, that's not what heaven is. Heaven is a place of activity. It is a place where God lives. It is a place of service, and we shall serve him forever. Amen. There's a true story of a missionary. David Livingston, he had a great mind and 
He buried himself in working for missions over in the country of Africa. And they, they wrote to him and they said, what are you doing over there giving yourself to missions? Why don't you come home where you belong? You know what he told them? He said, I'm standing where God wants me to stand and I'm serving where God wants me to serve. And he grew old. And after 17 or 18 different kinds of jungle fever that had hit him, he knew he was about to die. And they sent a telegram, he said, from the king of England and told him, said, when you die, we want you to be buried in Westminster Abbey. And as he, they read that to him, he looked up at them and his eyes was growing dim. He said, you tell them that would be good. I'd love to be buried there. He said, but you that are standing here, he said, would you do something for me? He said, will you cut out my heart? He said, don't let them know about it. But you take my heart and you bury it here in Africa. Because I've served God here for many a year. And this is where my heart is. Do you know what he was saying? He was saying God gave me a job to do. I have been faithful to serve the Lord. And when my body is resurrected, I'm coming up in a new service. Hallelujah. You know the third thing we're going to wake up to? We're going to wake up to a new beauty. I've seen a lot of beautiful sights here. I've seen the snow. I've seen the trees. I've seen the painted desert out in Arizona. But one of these mornings, I'm going to see things that my eyes have never seen before. We're going to see, Brother David, a new beauty. There's going to be gates of pearl on that city. There's going to be a rainbow above the throne of God. There's going to be streets of gold. We fight for that down here. We're going to walk on it up there. And the most beautiful sight you will ever be home will be when the Lamb walks out in the midst. And I'm going to bow down and thank Him for what He has done for me. For how He's opened my eyes. What a beautiful sight that's going to be. You know what the fourth thing I want to talk about? We're going to wake up to the greatest new feast that we have ever tasted. I'm headed for a feast in the sky. Do you know that there's going to be what's called the marriage supper of the Lamb? You talk about glorified chicken and hallelujah <laughs> turkey. There's going to be a table that's spread from sky to sky and God's only son it's going to be the leading one at that meeting in the act. Woo! Yes, amen. My mama raised 15 kids in the coal fields of McDowell County, West Virginia. Now, honey, we was poor. We didn't have a whole lot. We eat a lot of beans and we eat a lot of potatoes. We eat cornbread. My daddy made some of the best cornbread in an old cold stove. Oh, my goodness gracious. But whenever, because there's 15 of us, we had to, if we had to get to the table, then we could get there. And my mama would get that supper done, and she'd holler out, she'd say, come and get it, it's supper time. And man, we'd make a beeline for that table. Hallelujah to God. One day, children, I'm going to preach my last sermon. I'm going to pray my last prayer.
Don't grieve for those that have gone on. Don't grieve for them. They're there. They're, they've got a place at the table, the marriage supper, the lamb. They're waiting on you to get there, praise God. Yeah. And the saints will come from the, the north, the south, the east, and the west. And we're going to sit down and we're going to fellowship in one of the greatest reunions the world has ever yeah. known. You're going to see that loved one again. Yes. Hearts are heavy now. You may be grieving, but you're going to see them again at the reunion in the other side of eternity. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I got to go on. Thank you, Lord. We're going to wake up to a new song. Now listen, I ain't never been able to sing much down here. I can do it in my heart. I do pretty good singing in my heart. But something happens between my heart and my mouth. It gets all mixed up and it don't bother me. It don't bother God, but it bothers some of you. But one of these mornings, woo, Brother Don, I'm going to have a perfect voice. You think these musicians up here can sing? You just wait till you hear my voice. I ain't never going to get off pitch. The Bible said we're going to sing a new song that no mortal has ever sung. It was written by my father for the praise of his dear son. And God is going to let me sing like an angel. Amen. Yeah. 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 I might even play my spoons over there, praise God. <laughs> and lastly, we're going to wake up to the greatest praise we have ever no. Amen. I'm not ashamed to praise him. Some of you that are watching by the airways, now our church people, they do pretty good. They lift their hands. Some of you ain't never lifted your hands to praise God. Some of you are ashamed to praise him, but you listen to me. Someday I am going to get down on my knees and I'm going to kneel and I'm going to praise him like I ain't never praised him before because I praise him here but it ain't near what I want to do and I'm going to do over yonder. Amen. Let me tell you a story. I heard a story about a five year old little boy. He lived in Switzerland. The daddy was dead and the little boy, he just, he must have been born in, but he loved violin. They wanted to play the violin. He'd say, Mama, can you buy me a violin? She said, Honey, you know I don't have the money. She said, uh, When you get a little bit older, you can go to work, you can save the money, and, and, and you can buy yourself a violin, and, and you can learn to play that thing. And she said, Do you know, son, that across the tracks down there, there lives one of the greatest violin players that you'll ever find anywhere? And they tell me that for four hours, every day he practices that violin. Well, that little boy couldn't wait any longer. He turned six years old. It was his birthday. He sneaked off and went across the tracks. He went down to that violin player's mansion. He sneaked up under the window and he sat there to listen to the sweetest music he had ever heard. The master was playing the violin. And a servant come out and called him back. And said, Shh, said, be quiet, you're going to disturb the master. But the master heard it. And he come out and he said, he's already disturbed me. He said, boy, what are you doing here? He said, it's my birthday. I just turned six years old. I don't have much money and I like violins. And I wanted to come on my birthday and hear you play. He said, is that all? Hello, boy, said, yeah. He said, come on in the house. He said, I will give you a concert that people pay $25 to come and hear. And he started to play that violin, and that little old boy just began to weep and to cry. And when he was done, he asked that violinist, he said, can I touch it? Can I touch it? He said, yes. He said, I wish I had a violin like that. And that master violin player said, son, I've done about all I can do with this here violin. He said, I'll make you a deal. He said, I'm 54 years old. He said, if you will come for the next 20 years and let me train you nowhere but right here in this house every day for 20 years, 
He said, if you learn to play that violin on your 26th birthday, I am going to rent the great music hall in London, and I'm going to have the greatest violinist in the world to come and hear you. And he did just that. Right. And when the great finale came, in that hall, there were 3,000 people sitting there. In the first balcony, hallelujah, there were 1,500. In the second balcony, there was 800. In the third balcony, there was 300. And that boy started playing, and they clapped, and they stood up for 41 minutes. Everybody almost in that place was standing, and they said, we never heard it as good. We never heard it as good. You know what that boy did? He was a young man now. He looked, Judy, all the musicians can ease up here. He looked at the 3,000 in that auditorium. He looked at the 1,500. He looked at the 800. He looked at the 300. And did you know it did not move him until he looked in that third balcony up there. And there was a 74-year-old white-haired master got up slowly out of his chair and raised his hands toward that boy. And he said, well done, my son. Oh. Honey, that boy throwed up his hands and throwed that violin up. And he looked at that master. He said, thank you, thank you.
It's supper time. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Why don't you give your heart to God? There's loved ones waiting on the other side, and they're looking for you to come. They're cheering you on. Yes. They want you to make heaven. Yes. But you got to accept the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, honey, there's going to be a meeting in that air yes. like we've never heard or ever been in before. Yes. They're going to sing now, and we're going to close out. Go ahead. Y'all sing.